Good morning. This is Long Island Morning Edition on 88.3 WLIW-FM. I'm Michael Mackey. The Metropolitan Transportation Authority yesterday approved the newly reduced $9 toll rate for its first-in-the-nation congestion pricing plan, despite the objections of many Long Islanders and their representatives, including the MTA board member from Nassau County, who cast the loan vote against the plan. Alfonso A. Castillo and John Asbury report in Newsday that the race is now on to have federal transportation regulators from President Joe Biden's administration issue final approval for congestion pricing before incoming President Donald Trump has the opportunity to nix the plan, as he has previously vowed to do. If the MTA gets its way, the new tolls will take effect on January 5th after a 30-day public review period. It's the second time this year the MTA voted on a toll structure for its central business district tolling uh, program in Manhattan. The board approved a $15 base toll in March, but in a stunning reversal from her past support for congestion pricing, in June, Governor Kathy Hochul, citing affordability concerns, ordered a pause on the plan three weeks before the new tolls were to take effect in June. Hochul proposed a new plan to charge most vehicles $9 for driving below 60th Street in Manhattan, then gradually increasing the toll rate until raising it to the originally proposed $15 in the year 2030. The MTA's chairman said the overwhelming majority of New Yorkers will benefit from congestion pricing, including Long Island commuters who will see improvements to the Long Island Railroad funded by the tolls. Environmental advocates have launched a full-court press to get New York Governor Kathy Hochul to sign a bill that would ban the harvesting of horseshoe crabs in New York. Denise Civiletti reports on RiverheadLocal.com that the Horseshoe Crab Protection Act, passed by the state legislature in June, bans the taking of horseshoe crabs from New York waters for commercial fishing or biomedical purposes. Hochul has until the end of the year to sign the bill into law. The legislation aims to protect an ancient species advocates say plays a vital role in the marine ecosystem, but its decline is so serious they describe the arthropod as on the brink of local extinction. Horseshoe crabs, which evolved more than 200 million years ago, are found from Nova Scotia to Mexico and live year-round in Long Island Sound. Its decline due to harvesting and habitat loss is documented by the Long Island Sound study research. Horseshoe crabs are an important bait for commercial fishermen of whelk and eel. Horseshoe crab is the only usable bait for commercial fishermen catching whelk, according to Rob Carpenter of the Long Island Farm Bureau. The Greater Jamesport Civic Association has put together a committee of people experienced in land preservation to, quote, tackle the critical and timely issue of land preservation in Riverhead and throughout the East End. Denise Civiletti reports on RiverheadLocal.com that members of the committee, dubbed the Blue Ribbon Panel for Preservation by the Civic Group, are committed to work together to address land use and preservation concerns with a particular focus on farmland, shoreline, and open spaces in Riverhead Town. The panel was established partly in response to requests by Riverhead Town officials for the public to present new ideas for land preservation while recognizing Riverhead Town's fiscal constraints. Democrats kept their majority in the New York State Legislature but fell one seat short in the New York State Senate of retaining a supermajority, losing the ability to easily override a veto from Governor Kathy Hochul, and giving her more bargaining power in the upcoming legislative session. Late last week, as final absentee and mail-in ballots were counted, Democrat Chris Ryan claimed a victory over his Republican challenger, Nick Paro, in the central New York 50th State Senate District. The race had previously been too close to call. The win gives Democrats 41 
of the 63 state Senate seats, maintaining the majority but falling one seat short of a supermajority. Republicans who in the Senate were able to flip one seat and maintain all their incumbent candidates see it as a move in the right direction and already are looking forward to the 2026 elections, which includes a race for governor. New York State Senate and Assembly members are elected to two-year terms. Democrats in the Assembly maintained their supermajority and picked up at least one seat, winning 103 of 150 seats. Keisha Kluke reports in Newsday that much will be status quo in Albany when the legislative session starts in January, with Democrats holding on to their trifecta, a Democratic governor and majorities in both houses. But losing the supermajority does take some of the bargaining power away from legislative leaders who, without at least some Republican support in the Senate, would no longer be able to override gubernatorial vetoes. Residents and visitors to New York City should walk, bike, or leave the driving to bus and train operators during the holiday season's 15 gridlock alert days that fall between Wednesday and the end of the year, according to the City Transportation Department. Nicholas Grosso reports in Newsday that tomorrow through Friday and November 26th, that's next Tuesday, all ahead of Thanksgiving, will be the most congested for the remainder of this month, according to the department, which also urged the use of public transportation December 3rd through the 6th, December 10th through the 13th, and December 17th through the 19th. Whether traveling for work, errands, or recreation, please consider walking, biking, or taking public transportation whenever possible. The New York City Transportation Department's website states, Those who typically endure city holiday traffic should know that congestion this year could be worse because of the rise of Uber and Lyft and an increase in the number of trucks which have the impact of two to three cars, said Samuel Schwartz, a former New York City traffic commissioner known as Gridlock Sam, who has studied traffic speeds since 1971. A juvenile bald eagle that found itself in a precarious situation recently experienced a happy ending thanks to the work of the staff at the Evelyn Alexander Wildlife Rescue Center. Kaylin Riley reports on 27East.com that on October 30th, staff at the center got a call from a woman in North Sea who had spotted the eagle struggling to extract itself from shrubbery around Scallop Pond. Volunteers from the Hampton Bays Base Center drove out to the area and untangled the large bird from the bushes and brought it back to the center for treatment and evaluation. After two weeks at the center, the bird was returned back to the same area where it was found at Scallop Pond preserve in North Sea on November 13th, and the bird took off and flew away confidently and safely. (music) President-elect Donald Trump wants to, quote, terminate Democrats' climate agenda and let America drill baby drill. Those promises could stymie a key component of New York's plan to help slow global warming over the next few decades, building wind turbines off the coast of Long Island. On the campaign trail, Trump vowed to end all offshore wind projects on, quote, day one of his second term. I'm going to write it out in an executive order, he said at a May rally on the Jersey Shore. He said that offshore turbines, which New York is hoping will supply a sixth of its electricity within a decade, quote, destroy everything. Colin Kenneberg of New York Focus reports that while other sources of renewable energy are mainly regulated by the state, offshore wind can't move forward without approval from the federal government, which provides leases, permits, and subsidies. New York's projects rely on all three. If President-elect Trump follows through on his campaign pledge, it could blow a big hole in the state's efforts to clean up its grid, which are already far behind schedule. And at least one of Trump's GOP allies in Congress, though, does has a track record of supporting offshore wind. U.S. Representative Nick LaLota, who took over the Long Island seat of former New York gubernatorial candidate and incoming EPA chief Lee Zeldin, co-chairs a bipartisan congressional offshore wind caucus that aims to, quote, establish the United States as a leader in the industry. Congressman Lelodo, who does represent the East End, has touted the industry's promise of jobs and climate resiliency. 
This has been Long Island Local News on Long Island's only NPR station, WLIW-FM. I'm Michael Mackey.